You know what happened after every dub. Exactly. That kind of In more recent news, the Memphis Grizzlies Golden State Warriors rivalry is heating up with the Christmas game that's slated to come up in December between these two clubs. It all started in mid June when this fan here wanted to see a Grizzlies Warriors Christmas game. John Moran being like, okay, but it has to be in Memphis. And Draymond clapping back saying, well, look, you gotta play at the champs' home court. And you know what? John Moran's like, okay, fine. I'm gonna come to your crib and beat you guys up. <laughs> now, the Christmas game that's slated to be played, this has to be the most exciting one of the night. We got what we wanted, Dre. <laughs> that's in regards to the Christmas Day matchup, to which Draymond responded, that's the power of your voice, Young. Let's go. Bring the fam to the crib for dinner after. But to revisit this entire beef, this rivalry that's brewing, we have to go back a couple of years. Yes into the very beginning of the Warriors dynasty, okay? Back then, the Memphis Grizzlies halted the Warriors 16 game winning streak. Yes, the Warriors were the number one team in the NBA, but many people thought the Grizzlies had a chance against them. I mean, you have Zebo, you have guys like Jeff Green. This is during the grit and grind era, the prime years. Marcus Gasol, two years removed of being defensive player of the year. Yeah, this was a team that you did not want to mess with in the playoffs. For sure, it's a fact that if you were to face this team in the playoffs, you would have a hard time. You would probably lose a couple games. And let me tell you something, you might come out of this game hurt. I'm telling you, these guys... They're a bunch of dogs, and the Warriors, man, they were up for the fucking challenge. <laughs> Draymond, when talking about the possibility of facing Zach Randolph, a fellow Michigan State alum, he said, we come from the same place, it's a brotherhood back there, it builds, and it lasts for a lifetime. He was also quoted saying, we talk a lot when we play against each other, a lot. He's quiet about it, you won't really notice it. It may not be like that with everybody, but he's always talking to me. But sure enough, the player we didn't mention that will be matched up against Curry, Mike Conley, I mean, he had an injury of his own to deal with, and it will make this series very complicated. Watch CJ's left arm, elbow, and forearm right there. Unintentionally. I Whether you see the slow motion, the live replay, or fast forward replay, you would know this was an egregious injury. And, well, sure enough, it's a pretty bad one. An orbital fracture in his eye, and he would have to have surgery on it. No timetable for a return. Oh boy, this is not looking good for the Grizzlies. This is the series where Mike Conley's offensive firepower is needed more than anything, especially going up against Curry. Good execution again by the Warriors. But they need Mike Conley in this series. Game one was essentially a wash. Towards the end, you could see Curry even going as far as to do the jet celebration. Oh, of course, mimicking the great Jason Eugene Terry. I mean, this is insane. I see you tight teaching him that, Mark Jackson. He got his own airplane flying. I know most of my returning viewers are wondering, why am I sounding so different? It's because I have to paste the video, okay? This, this is taking too much time. Yes, Mike Conley is about to return. This is what Grizzlies fans wanted to see, Mike Conley's name back in the starting lineup. I am orgasmic over this storyline right here. I mean, this is just straight up out of a movie. Mike Conley being blinded from one eye symbolizes the pain he had to go through in order to become stronger, elevating to where he returns with a new face. Conley for three, what a shot, Mike Conley. That's why you need him back. And aren't you just as bricked up as I was when I seen this? Mike Conley and the Grizzlies won that game. They ended up winning at Oracle Arena with the mask, with the one eye being hurt. I mean, this was symbolic, pure symbology. I mean, this was the perfect series for a guy like Tony Allen, first team all defense. First team all defense. First team all defense. Of course, this references the fact that he did make all defensive first team in his 2015 season. And what do you know? You got guys imitating the hero, Conley, crossing over guys, shooting freeze. Bars. I mean, this game was looking very nice. Tony Allen making defensive plays with just ferocity, and he was just an overall force. <laughs> Mm. 
Memphis goes up by seven. They go on to win it by 10. They hold Golden State to 89 points. Holy snap. That was a nostalgia trip I was not ready for. <laughs> you guys could have ended the, the Warriors dynasty before the Warriors dynasty even started. <laughs> That's um, funny. At this point in the series, the Grizzlies had a 2-1 lead over the eventual championship Warriors in 2015. Yeah, this was a big deal, but Curry didn't care. Biggest lead. And he gives Curry the ball, chance for three, splash. He notched a game-high 33 point in his game four to lift up the Warriors to a tight series. Oh, he's feeling it right now. 12 point lead, looking for more Curry. Nice just watching this replay just reminds me of why he was even the MVP that season. Just so smooth with it, man. Steph Curry has gone 32 points. But it wasn't just on offense that changed the series up for the Warriors. We got these guys. We know what we got to do. We 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 know you know we know what needs to be done. And Steve Kerr started making a huge adjustments. Listen, game four, you know, he put uh, Andrew Bogut on Tony Allen and kind of cross match. You know, just kind of threw us all for a loop. We were like running in mud at that point. And thank our lucky stars, Coach Nick was covering the league back then. You can see that it was nothing short of a catastrophe. And even though they got a lot of offensive rebounds, their offense sputtered with tons of misses and turnovers. But that's not all, folks. He even gave us a very nice cherry on top, a game prediction. The staff at Memphis is too smart to get burned a second time in a row. But ultimately, it would not matter as Tony Allen was slated to be out for Game 5 due to a hamstring injury. Yeah, that's not a good news. Green weaving, trying to get the shot up. No call that way. Curry swings it the other way. And he got it! At this point, I didn't even bother showing you guys Game 5 because it was just like Game 6, a wash. The series was over. I don't care if it was a close game. I don't even care if it was a two-point game. What? What, what you gonna do about it? Fight me? The Warriors won that series fair and square. The Memphis Grizzlies were unlucky. They had injuries through and through. And Conley knows this could have been the difference. If we win that series, who knows if the Warriors are the Warriors dynasty of, you know, that everybody knows. You but there was just no way this man was gonna lose. Uh, you know, You're too well, Daddy. I know. Hold on one second, okay? Some of the most wholesome things I've seen in a post-game presser. I mean, Steph Curry and his daughter stole the show. It was, it was special, I think, because everybody was kind of enjoying the moment. And, uh, I feel best. You wanted to say that. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so cute, so adorable. To think that she's 10 years old now, man, they grow up so fast. Now. Let's be honest with ourselves. If you have a baby that cute, a family that wholesome, you're just winning at life. It means that Curry was bound to win a championship and it just so happened to be in 2015 with Steph Curry now being a first time champion and you see him right here kissing his new baby. <laughs> but there were questions. Were the Warriors lucky to have even won that title in the first place? Should we put an asterisk next to that title? And some people may say yes. And I mean, they were lucky, that's for sure. Just look at the list of players that were hurt when playing against the Warriors. And that includes Mike Conley and Tony Allen. And the next season, you had the Warriors now out to prove everybody else wrong. Everybody that still doubts them. The kick out, better pass. The fly by, return it. Wide open, go! And this Warriors team was off to a hot start. I mean, just playing electric basketball, their emotion offense, sensational stuff. Teamwork at its finest. They were the number one team through and through, much better than they were in 2015. And guess what they did to the Grizzlies? Oh boy. Golden State cruises winning by, and I mean this, 50. Your final score. Yo, boy. That is disgusting. And I'm telling you, the second and third quarter is really what made this game ugly. And you could see here, the season series between these two teams, it was not close. I mean, the Warriors swept them. Four games, four wins. It was easy for them, okay? And the last game they played against the Grizzlies was a pretty special one. I mean, if they beat the Grizzlies, they get 73 wins. And Jaeger said it, man, the coach of the Grizzlies. It's for history, baby. The Grizzlies knew they were the spoilers. They had to play the roles of the party poopers. Matt Barnes, a former warrior, knew how big this occasion was. He said, we have a chance to interrupt history. Yeah, but that didn't happen. It's official number 73. 
The greatest regular season in NBA history. The greatest regular season team ever, and perhaps even the greatest team ever. Wait, wait, what, what, what are you saying? They didn't win a championship. Do you think I care, buddy? Now, on to the next season, where the Warriors are leading big against their Grizzlies. The Warrior Post Game Live. I don't think those five turnovers in the fourth helped them, though. No, 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 no. And yes, this was a team with Kevin Durant on it. And so many people questioned themselves and thought, hey, do the Grizzlies have the Warriors number? No, I'm actually not joking. This was what people said at the time. People thought the Grizzlies may have had a number and that, you know, they're the only team that defeated the Warriors twice this season. But that would not matter much as the playoffs was a cakewalk for the Warriors, only losing one game in that postseason run. That's a historical right there. And you know what happened next. That means the Warriors won the championship in 2017. Kevin Durant's first ring. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Bro, that dude really needed Steph. I mean, without Steph and the Warriors, this guy would be a bum. I mean, seriously, what would we rank him as? Top 50 all time? Okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> well, the refereeing, I mean, you could see it. The Warriors were frustrated one night when they lost to the Grizzlies by 10 points. And apparently, Kevin Durant and Steph Curry were ejected. You could see it right here where Steph Curry and Kevin Durant get booted off the game. And I, I, for the life of me, do not understand why Kevin Durant got ejected. I could not find any tape. But Steph Curry, I mean, you could see it here. He threw the mouthpiece. Kevin Durant just got thrown out too, partner. Again, this was the same Grizzlies team, the Grid and Grind Grizzlies. Did they have a chance? Okay, come on, bro. The fact that we even had to question this is crazy. Back to back. No, I'm serious. Like, Kevin Durant would actually be a bum without Curry, but this guy sucks. What has he done since? Nothing. And I mean nothing. I mean, this guy is so bad. Okay, let's let's go move on to the next season. I mean, Memphis and they were very off. You could see that they were headed towards a full out rebuild. The second pick will be made by the Memphis Grizzlies. Oh. And boy, did they cash out on their second pick, John ja Morant, already being sensational in his rookie year. He's been an impressive rookie for Memphis and giving them optimism going for the future. So you know what that means. The Grizzlies full rebuild. They're not going to contend for anything anytime soon. The Grizzlies are now relegated to being a lottery team for the remaining time. And same thing could be said about the team across the sea. I mean, not really, but still. The Warriors... They were also coming off a defeat in the finals. Very tragic. A lot of very sad things happened during that finals. A lot of great things for me, honestly. But uh, that finals really just took a lot out of the wars. And you could see here a new team. And ironically, this is where the rivalry got a lot spicier. David Aldridge uh, kind of started something last night completely incidental. Andre Iguodala not wanting to play for the Grizzlies. Yeah, they weren't happy. Grizzlies guard Dylan Brooks. Apparently a little fed up about being asked about Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. He Dylan Brooks being candid as always. I mean, you could see here he was being honest. It came from his heart what he had to say about Iggy. A guy that's on our team doesn't want to be on our team. You know, I can't wait till we find a way to trade him so we can play him. And I could just be to show him what really Memphis is about. John Morant then retweeted that quote and things really took off. And you knew Steph Curry just had to come in and clap back saying, well, look, Iggy is a champion, but I'm not sure if he expected Ja to reply. So I tweeted that image, took it from Instagram to the Twitter. John Morant answered me on Twitter with this photo of Kevin Durant holding the MVP finals trophy. Bro, that is cold. John Morant, I like it out of you, man. I like that out of you, bro. You got some, you got some spice in you, bro. <laughs> That's what we want to see in this league, man. For those wondering, this is where the rivalry really began. Listen, it's all entertainment. Okay. NBA stands for nothing but actors, whatever's gonna, you know, create rivalries <laughs> and, and, you know, make people have fun. It's nice. So, Tooth, why did you not start the video with that? Okay, look, I had to pre-end the video with some history, okay? It's, it's important for us. Now, Iggy, he was traded to the Miami Heat. And this is where the beef just stalled out. I mean... John Miranda, Dylan Brooks, they wanted to keep it classy, and which is very respectable. And the Warriors, they went on with their day. 
honoring the great Iguodala. Steph and Clay went rock, paper, scissors. Here we go. Steph won round one. Got him. Steph won round two. Even though they were at the bottom of the league standings, they still knew how to have fun. This Warriors franchise. It reminds me of when Steve Kerr let the players coach the team. Takes the grease board and he hands it to Andre Iguodala. Guess who's coaching the timeouts and the huddles tonight? The Golden State Warrior players are going to do this themselves. And what a ballsy move to have your team coach into a blowout, a 46-point game. I mean, Iguodala was a big part of this dynasty. And I'm sure, just like us watching it at the time, he was excited about this potential plan. This moves, finds Green. Green drives down a lane, the floater's up, no good, overtime. Steph Curry, John Morant playing to make the playoffs. Winner goes to the playoffs. Losers get eliminated. Yeah, this is where the stakes got higher. Four to shoot. Morant makes his move, spins in the paint, turns, puts it up, puts it in. John Morant knocks it down. It's a five point game with 4.5 remaining. And the Grizzlies came out on top against the Warriors. In all seriousness though, this was a very big deal at the time. The Grizzlies beating a Warriors team. I mean, the same team that they dissed a year ago. And it all reminded us that there was more to come from this team. Those you know that the future is you know, very bright here. I feel like, you know, we just have a team full of dogs. But for the Warriors, this was a tragic, just sad loss. This team fought so hard to make it to the play-in. Steph Curry damn near carried this team, being an MVP finalist. I mean, you could see it in his face. Disappointment, hurt, angst. He was so out of it. But he had to leave us with this special message to end the season. Just didn't go our way. I don't know how it, many different ways to say it, but it's uh, it's a, it was a special year, all things considered. You know, I'm in a new experience for me, Draymond Loon. Tried to make the most of it, come back, bottle this up, everybody make the right strides, take advantage of the summer, and don't want to see us next year. Into the next season, we knew we had to mark down our calendars because whenever these two teams played, fireworks ensued. This. Grizzlies team improved substantially. I mean, they were just a much better team beating the Warriors one game and then the Warriors coming in beating them the next game. These were two of the best teams in the NBA. Morant pulls up a three, good if it goes. It does! And this Grizzlies roster, I mean, they had a swagger unlike any other team. And other things that appealed to me as well. Um, not going to name them, just, yeah, okay. If we were to nominate a team, to be the bad boys of this era. It would be the Grizzlies with John ja Morant and Desmond Bain. He, he, he talked back to LeBron. And I gotta respect the youngster for going toe to toe with the king. The referees are now telling all the players to stop, stop all this chatter. But yeah, this Memphis Grizzlies team, yeah, if you didn't know by now, yeah, they were legit. They were winning games and they were doing it in style. The most stylish team and honestly, the most, we want all the smoke team. He comes to the Grizzlies bench and Desmond Bain, he does not like that. So each player was assessed a technical. And after this game, it's where a legendary moment was born. Not the timeout, not the scuffle, the presser. My check, my check. Yo, yo, yo. It's the unicorn man and the ninja in here checking in. Y'all ready? Media is starting now. We play with energy, we play with intensity. We love that. That brings joy to us. That back and forth. That just, you know, that's just what we like. So, you want to play that game? We can play that game. It's cool. You know, it's I promise you, it's not me. The audio is just bad as is. Okay, it's from them. I'm just gonna say what I feel, and I'm gonna do what I feel too. And that's what they're gonna do. And we appreciate, like, you know, if you you bring it and we we on that, that's cool. But you know, what we look for that's man. what you saw what happened. You saw ain't no running in the yeah. end, man. We climb up the chimney. That's, yeah, for sure. We ain't ducking no fun, smoke, man. man. We're gonna let everybody know we're here. We're gonna play hard, trying to get a win. And if you don't like it, oh well. And yeah, you might as well bring it. So if you're gonna cry, what the baby's gonna do. You guys uh <laughs> But seriously, why is the audio so trash in here, bruh? I mean, these guys have millions of dollars. Okay, okay, let's just move on again. Because this is where we get to present day. Catch your popcorns ready. Last night, and suiting up for Golden State, Iggy was booed every time he touched the ball. 
Two years later, Dylan Brooks, still feeling the same way he felt about Iggy not wanting to play for the Grizzlies, he let it be known in a post-game presser after they beat the Warriors in convincing fashion. What you think about how this team has developed? Um, it developed a lot, and we all had the vision, and he didn't, which is perfect. You know, send him back to the Warriors and let him, you know, do his thing over there. And Jaron Jackson Jr. also tweeted saying, "Strengths and numbers mocking the Warriors, essentially saying they had the strength and numbers. They were the better team." And Rankings wise, they were the better team headed into this playoffs. They were the second seed, the Warriors, the third seed. And you could see here now the Grizzlies they had to face a playing team, and that playing team would be the Timberwolves. Beverly, I mean, they wanted to be called the bad boys of this era, they want to be the guys that want all the smoke. And John Moran, he replied in kind. You remember that quote I said? <laughs> Which about ain't ducking, no smoke. We run up the chimney. Simple as that. We ain't no conversations about not letting nobody get under your skin. If somebody, you know, comes towards you, ain't no, you can't back down. It's a soft person tendency. We don't got no soft guys over here. I'm sorry, but if you're the Timberwolves, just seeing all these leads blown in the series alone, I mean, you had a chance to win the series if you had at least won two of these games. And allow me to refresh your memories if you had forgotten how bad this is. Jones will try again. Morant the offensive board! Couldn't get the offensive board and guess what? Morant catches you sleeping. Morant the drive gets inside, layup is good! The Timberwolves were leading into the fourth quarter and now they're playing stupid hero ball. It's not a good shot. That's hero basketball, what we just finished talking about. And now, fortunately, McDaniels does make the Grizzlies pay here with a three-pointer that makes it a one-point game. The Grizzlies now having to respond and they do in such epic fashion four on the shot clock morant the drive morant jones just gets it off the time it's good and honestly the grizzlies it looked like they were in trouble it really did i honestly thought that the Timberwolves were going to win the series at one point that's how close this series was and that's how confused i am seeing how many blown leads the Timberwolves had now the grizzlies they have to move on so look, there, there's no falling behind by 15 and 18 and 23 points and coming back to win games. There's no trailing by 10 going into the fourth quarter. This is not Minnesota. This is the Golden State Warriors. What have you learned? What can you apply? And now the Warriors have a new death lineup, a lineup that is so ferocious, so dangerous on offense. I mean, this team is going to be hard to beat if you're the Grizzlies. And the Grizzlies, I mean, you could see here, Draymond Green was ejected because of this play right here and you may think to yourself i mean this doesn't look like a flagrant two i mean i'm not the ref don't blame me for that bro running around the floor it sold him now. and steve kerr's reaction yep. you know how i know this rivalry is real i mean just seeing the reaction that these fans gave to draymond you could see it here, man. Their bloods are boiling, and boy, were they happy when they seen this play right here. Tries again, gets inside, shot block. Melton with the rejection. Melton alley up to Moran. Listen to this crowd right now. Are you hearing this? Are you? This is insane. Wow. Now, John Morant did hit the game winner. Uh, not really. The halftime buzzer beater. Okay, it's, it's it's not the same thing. But could he do it again? <laughs> and Moran on the drive, scoop layup, no good, it's over. I'm telling you, these two teams are just so feisty, man. They play with such physicality. And yeah, they were about to get way more physical. One more time. And Jim just I'm sorry, this is just for his full full reference. Okay, hand. here you go. Now the floor has been upgraded to a flagrant foul penalty, too, for wind up, impact, and follow through to the head. Dylan Brooks will be ejected from the game. What an absolutely devastating play. I mean, just a terrible play from. Dylan Brooks. Now Draymond, he did get hurt in the same game and he flipped off the fans as well. And I'm pretty sure both fan bases did not think the rivalry would get this intense. Now you have a lot of contention between these two as the series is now tied. And mind you, John Morant now making history. John Morant 47, 8 and 8 went 15 for 31 from the floor. 18 of those points coming in the decisive fourth quarter. He is the first player to 
have multiple 45 point games in the playoffs before being a 23 year old since LeBron James and Kobe Bryant did it when they were young. Now, <laughs> Steve Kerr, he had some very blunt words to say about the Dylan Brooks play. And I, I get it, man. I really do. In the playoffs, you know, this should be the time of, of his life. And uh, a guy comes in and whacks him across the head in midair. He broke the code. Dylan Brooks broke the code. Well, the fractured elbow, who get the MRI today when the team gets back to Golden State. Dylan Brooks rightfully suspended for that horrific play. That could have really ended somebody's career right there. And Draymond Green, I mean, he also had some things to say about him flipping off the fans. You're going to boo somebody who get elbowed in the eye and face running on blood, you should get flipped off. So I'll take the fine. I'll go do an appearance and make up the money. But it felt really good to flip him off. You're going to boo someone that get elbowed in the eye and blood running down your face? I could have had a concussion or anything. So if they're going to if they're gonna be that nasty, I can be nasty too. And I'm assuming the cheers was because they know I'll get fined. Great, I make $25 million a year. I should be just fine. And somehow it gets worse. The John Moran story now. Uh, Yo, man, these guys, I'm, getting really, I'm getting sick of the NBA right now. I've never seen a non-story being blown this much out of proportion. I mean, John Moran, they're saying the Grizzlies are, that Jordan Poole meant to hurt him or injure his knee. Yeah, this was getting very ugly. Jared says, look, I've been oh. told by the league, uh, they reviewed the, or someone told him that the league reviewed the Poole Morant play at the request of the Grizzlies. It's been determined on, that it was a normal basketball play. Yeah. And he did hurt his knee. We could actually attest to this. I mean, just look at how he's walking back to the locker room. He's clearly hurt. And it would probably mean he wouldn't be able to play in the following games in the series. And Taylor Jenkins, just listen to what he implies here. Yeah, he's getting evaluated now. Nothing further. I mean, we just watched the replay. Uh, he, he was going after a dribble, and Jordan Poole actually grabbed his knee and yanked it, which kind of triggered whatever happened. So I'm actually going to be very curious to see what happens after that. And then you also had John Moran tweeting out, broke the code in response, deleting that tweet thereafter. And you guys, this is where John Moran really got hurt. He bumps his knee right here on Clay Thompson's leg. Uh, this is a bad look. The, li the notion he tried to hurt that kid, I'm not going to live with that. And now, now they're trying to come. This is the cold. Man, give me a break, man. Y'all, man, I... <laughs> Are you getting frustrated, Chuck Stray? Every call, Ernie. Are and how in the world is Draymond Green coming here and acting like the adult in the room? It looks like Jordan is reaching in for the ball and... Taylor Jenkins, after his pre in his press conference, said that he felt that uh, Jordan yanked at his knee, and John Morant just tweeted and then deleted that Jordan broke the code. You have a response to that? No, I don't have a response to it. Draymond didn't seem to think much of it at first. It looked to me like they bumped knees before he even reached. It's kind of what it, I thought I saw, but I'm not going to sit here and go tit for tat. We got a basketball game to try to win Monday. Now, months later, John Moran did admit to being wrong. Do you think people made too much of, like, you and Jordan Poole? Yeah, um, even me, honestly. Um, obviously, I was frustrated, you know, how I got hurt. Um, you know, I sent the tweet. I actually, once again, my mom came into play, like, no, delete it. Both John and Poole seem to be cool with each other, and that's really good. And as far as who won games four, I mean, it was pretty clearly the Warriors. This is how badass you have to be to play a big pivotal playoff game like that and then go and clap back at John Moran. They were up 20 points. Josh started to go on his rampage and scoring every play. And I think he looked up like, wow. And he looked up and they were down 25. That was to show them this isn't the Minnesota Timberwolves. It's, you're, not, you're no longer playing that team. This is the Golden State Warriors. This is championship level basketball. This is how we do it. 
And then we have the media inflaming things. They're just making things more intense than they have to be. Malika, I also asked Stephen Curry what the plan was tonight, and he just turned around and looked at me and said, whoop that trick. That <laughs> is our game plan. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. In a podcast called The Point Forward, hosted by Andre Iguodala and Evan Turner, they both talk about the false reports that are out there. Yeah, well, another person's light. That happened to us in the Memphis series. Somebody misreported something on the faces of our league, and it's, it's hurting it hurt me because it's like now we got to look at you like you're an outsider and they're going to say it's not right and why you do this person like that but it's no you false reported something there's consequences and repercussions to all our actions even when we make mistakes well it's, it's, it applies to y'all too yeah putting two and two together the face of our league has to be stephen curry and the person that's looked at as an outsider in this case is kendra andrews who is also sister with malika andrews they're both from the bay area with kendra also working as a sideline reporter for the warriors let's be honest here folks we've all had that suspicion about the andrew sisters and i think this story is what really solidified it for all of us um, all of us that's aware of the story that is okay warriors grizzlies the series is not finished yet <laughs> john morant might not be playing but the grizzlies sure are cooking i mean just look at how much they would win by i mean this is what is this a 46 point lead at this point 47 exactly that kind of a man i'd love to be in that arena one day just hearing that crowd beautiful but the Warriors, I'm pretty sure they want to forget about this game. I mean, this is a bad one. And you know that gritty that John Moran always does after wins. And Jordan Poole, apparently, I mean, you see it here. He's trolling him with the gritty too. And why is he doing that? Because the Warriors would clinch the series. Finally, it would be over. And the Warriors, it wasn't just there, okay, that they ended. They also won the Western Conference Finals, and they also won the Finals. I'm not going to go through that, because why would I? Of a child when they finally win it. All the hard work, all the sacrifice has paid off as they reach the goal. And one thing we learned about this Warriors team is they have them receipts. This was a collective effort, and strength in numbers is alive and well. <laughs> I can't wait. There was this one player on the Grizzlies who tweeted strength in numbers after they beat us in the regular season, and it pissed me off so much. I can't wait to retweet that thing, freaking bum. That, I had to watch that. I'm just like, this freaking cloud. Okay. 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 Sorry. That memory just popped up. Do you, King? You deserve this moment. You are the champion. You're going to mock us? Like, you ain't never been there before, bro. We've been there. We know what it takes. So to be here again, hold that. Back right. Twitter fingers. Can you believe it? I got a memory like an elephant. I don't forget. And there was a lot of people kicking us when we were down. All right. And guess what? I also had them receipts of all those doubters, all those naysayers, especially regarding Steph Curry and his clutch gene. And I have it in this video right here if you want to check it out. It's a long one. It's a doozy. If you want to see the ultimate masterclass compilation of the Warriors proving their haters wrong, well, go ahead and click on this video. I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it. And I'm pretty sure you guys need to refill your popcorns after this one. <laughs> Adios, muchachos.